Right, so module 10 is, is actually a, it's a pretty short module. We're going to be laying the groundwork for most of chapter 3 in the textbook, um, which deals with conditional execution. So conditional execution will allow us to branch our program and say, you know, if, if a certain condition holds, execute a portion of our code, um, otherwise execute some other portion of our code. Um, before we can really do that, uh, we need to understand how we express conditions. Um, and fundamentally, this, this is expressed using Boolean data, true or false. And we, we talked briefly about Boolean data earlier on in, in some of the first modules. Uh, but now we'll use this module just to kind of refresh the idea. Um, we'll also introduce relational operators, which will be very familiar to, to all of you. Um, but we'll look at how they're used in C, C++ to compare things. Um, to compare numbers principally. So we've, we've, we've doubled back. We, we had been looking at a few sections in Chapter 4 within um, the textbook. Now we're going back to Chapter 3, and this module really is just covering Section 3.1. Um, so what is Boolean data? Um, we were familiar from the real world um, thinking about quantities and things and, and, and data types that are fairly familiar, integers and doubles, we, we probably aren't used to before learning programming thinking about decimal numbers as doubles, but certainly we know what doubles are. We know what decimal numbers are. Certainly we know what characters and letters in the alphabet are. We, we're used to typing them all the time. Um, Boolean data is something that we don't really think about as data. Um, yes, we're all familiar with the, with, with the concept of true and false. Uh, but we don't think of that as actual answers or actual data typically. So we want to get in, in the mode of starting to think as Boolean um, data types or Boolean th values um, as being just like integers, just like doubles, just like characters. Um, and what is really nice about Boolean data is that we can use it very, very cleanly to express decisions in programs, to express conditions um, to make decisions on. Um, and again, a lot of that is going to be put into context um, in the subsequent modules now. So what is an actual Boolean expression? Um, how do we come up with a Boolean expression? Um, perhaps even before we even get into um, this slide, um, we, should, we should think about, well, how do we create Boolean data? Um, so let's, let's go over here and you know, we, we all know that we know how to create an int, right? We can say int x equals 5, and that creates a variable in main memory called x, and 5 is assigned to it. Um, to create a Boolean value, we're going to have a different data type, bool y, um, but we're going to assign it, and just like any other variable, we don't have to assign it right away. We could have just said x equals, or you should have said, we could have just said int x, but we opted to assign it. Here we, we know that we can assign x to be any expression that yields an integer. So it could have been 5, it could have been um, 4 plus 1, it could have been z times 3. right? So it could have been any expression that yielded um, some integer, assuming z was an integer of course. Booleans work the same exact way. Right? So a Boolean, the, the possible values, um, literal values, is true or false. But just like we've got operators that can create expressions that yield integers, right? we can do the same thing with Booleans. So we can have a bool s equals y. Okay. So just take the value y. So that's, that's the, the example of using a variable. But the question becomes, well, how do we get operators? How do we, how do we produce Boolean values using a little bit more, more complicated terminology than just true or false, just literal values? Right. And that's where the, one of the first um, uses of relational operators come in. So let's go back to this example. A relational operator takes an expression on the left-hand side and the right-hand side 
and produces a true or false value. And we've all seen less than, greater than. We know what they mean. We need less than, greater than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than equal to. Um, these symbols are a little bit different in that the double equal sign, and we're going to have to talk about what it means to have a double equal sign versus a single equal sign. But a double equal sign means is the left hand side equal to the right hand side. The exclamation mark equals means is this side not equal to the right hand side. So relational operators allow you this to state essentially questions about numbers. Typically these expressions will be numbers. They might be 5, it might be x times 6, but there'll be some expression that yields a number. So if we write 5 double equals 5, the answer will be true. If we write 5 double equals 3, the answer will be false. So just to, to repeat some of the context here, um, we're used to seeing integers, 5 plus 6. We know that these are, this plus sign is an operator. And we know that the plus sign combines these two numbers into an integer. All right, so the key thing here is that these are integers. And the output is an integer. Um, for relational operators, we still might have integers. Um, by the way, we can also have doubles. We can have integers and doubles on the right-hand side. We can mix and match because integers and doubles can be compared. But when we see one of these less than operators, we know the result is going to be true. Right? So in this case, we've got, let me draw the arrow over here, we've got integers as the operands, but the result is of type Boolean. And that's the key difference between our relational operators. So let's, uh, let's look at this in code and see what these values print out as. Um, we'll get used to working with some Boolean values. I'm just going to copy this code and we'll talk about it in Visual Studio. And so um, I've created um, a couple of different variables. So I've got a Boolean lights on equals true. All right, that's just the true or false variable that holds a true or false value. Computer is smart. This is sort of tongue in cheek a little bit, I guess. Um, but computer is smart equals 5 less than 6. So hopefully that variable, this result, should be true. That variable should print out as true. Um, and just reinforcing that we can use variables in the expression. Here we've gotten my slides are a little incorrect there, I should have put int. Um, doubles, double x equals 5.5, double y equals 5.1, and we can compare these two and assign this value. Um, what I want to do, so when we run this, we can really see what's happening. Um, I can just print them out. So we'll see three Boolean values print out to the screen. Okay, so if we look at what's, what's supposed to be printing, um, first off, the, one of the things you'll notice is that it prints out as one. So it does not true does not print out as the, the word true. It prints out as a number. So it prints out as one. False will print out as zero, as we'll see in a second. Um, each one of our variables is being assigned, and, you, and certainly they all print it out as true, as we would expect. Now, if I change this and I say, let's say, equals, okay? So five does five equal six? Certainly, we should see false come out. And there we've got zero for false. So the second thing that we printed out, computer is smart, that was assigned to the, be the result of 5 double equals 6. The double equal sign is a comparison. Right? Um, might be easier to read like this, understanding that you're assigning this true or false value, you're assigning this true or false value into this variable. Um, this double equal sign cannot have a space in it. If we try to do compile that, um, we'll get a compiler error. 
So the double equal sign, even though it is two keystrokes, C++ thinks of it as an indivisible operator. It's an indivisible unit. There is a big difference between a double equal sign and a single equal sign. Um, if we do something like this, C++ will give us a compiler error because it actually thinks that we're asking to put the number 6 into a variable called 5. And the vari there can't be a variable called 5. That's a number. Um, where that's important to, to, under to, to remember here is if we do something like this. If I had a double equal sign, um, we know that this will print out false. Right? So x would be replaced with 5 over here because x has 5 in it. Um, and if we ran it, we would see that false would come out. Oh, I just looks like I redefined that. So let's uh, let's make this s instead. And we get what we'd expect. Now, if I forget that double equal sign and I just write a single equal sign, what's unfortunate about this is that this is a realistic expression. This is a regular, normal C++ expression. It's an assignment statement. The compiler doesn't complain. The compiler says, yeah, that's fine. And it takes the 6 and it assigns it into S. And we've actually talked about this when we looked at combination assignment or series of assignments in the same line. The answer to this, the operator, the assignment operator, actually yields a result that yields 6. It, it yields whatever that value was assigned to. And actually, that's what's causing this, this warning, because it's saying I'm forcing an int 6 into a Boolean, which could be an issue. Right? Now, if I print this out, forcing a 6 into a Boolean value will result in 1. Um, if I go back, actually, to do the expression just to, to prove that out, um, same warnings, of course, but just a different, different way of getting the same answer, I'm getting 1 coming out. And that's because if I assign s to be 6, 6 is not 0. And any number that's not 0 maps to true for Boolean expressions. If I say 0 here, I'll see false come out. And that's only because 0 was replacing this assignment operator. So moral of the story, the whole point here, that double equal sign is an equality statement. Is s equal to 0, true or false? A single equal sign takes 0 and puts it into s. Totally different operation. So keep that in mind. Um, we've got other operators, right? So we can do, let's say this is 5.5, right? Um, we can do x greater than or equal to y. So we'll just look at the last output here. And of course, that should print out true. And it does right there. We got our last one. Um, note that just like double equal sign, that's going to be a compiler error. The greater than equal is a, an indivisible operator. Right? You have to have no spaces between that. You also cannot write it like this. All right. Greater than or equal to, you always write it the way we say it. We say greater than or equal to. We don't say equal to or greater. Uh, or typically, we, we don't say that. So it's got to be in that precise order. Greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Um, the not equal to, same deal. All right, there it's an indivisible expression. Again, normally I, I put some parentheses around all of these to make it a little more clear. Um, that's going to print out true. Or, I'm sorry, that's going to print out false. Right? Because these two numbers are indeed equal to each other. If they're equal to each other, then if I ask, are they not equal? And that's what this means. If I ask, are they not equal to each other? The result gets stored as false. So for now, that's all. That, that's that's what we're looking at in terms of booleans, right? We are creating boolean expressions, or we're creating boolean values 
um, assigning variable values um, with literals, true or false, um, or by using relational operations or relational operators to compare numbers. Um, whether it's an integer or a double on the left or right hand side doesn't make much of a difference. Occasionally it will, and we'll, we'll see some, some situations where we need to be careful with that. 